Hey everybody, Stephen Key here. I'm with patent attorney Damon Kelly, giving you the real juice here, you guys. And by the way, if you need any type of help with any intellectual property from patents and all that other stuff, make sure you call Damon. He's inventor friendly. He will do you right. Okay. Can I, Stephen? Can I jump in here, real, just real quick? Yeah. Um, you, you inventors who call me, uh, please speak clearly and slowly your phone number. Because half the time I cannot tell what you're saying and I can't return your phone call if I don't know what the number is, okay? Thanks. Sounds like something, sounds like me. All right, <laughs> okay, here we go. I wanna talk about design patents, all right? And the reason why I wanna talk about design patents is because I filed a couple and I think it's something we need to be aware, aware of, especially all these little tools that help us protect our creativity. So first of all, Damon, what is a design patent? A design patent, as opposed to a utility patent, covers the ornamental aspects of your design. So it doesn't cover any of the use of it, it doesn't make any difference how you use it or in what location or whatever, it is simply the ornamental aspects of your invention. Okay. Well, you know what's great about that? I was in the guitar pick business and we had this one very big seller and it was a very unique design and uh, it was called Grave Picker. It was a guitar pick in the shape of a skull. And we filed nice. a, a design patent on that. And because we thought the skull was such a unique shape, it would be hard for someone to get around it. So we thought that was and smart. That's a, it, well, that's a great idea, Stephen. And, and let's just maybe delve into that just a little bit more. Let me ask you, was it expensive to do that? No. Okay, and, and was it fairly quick or was it, you know, like three or four years like a utility application? It was really quick. Excellent, and you got it, which is, it speaks to how easy it is to get the design patent if nobody else is out there. So the process is very quick, it's inexpensive, and it happens you know, fairly, fairly easily. So that's, I mean, that's really the upside of the design patent. It, it happens very quickly. So you, know, you can get some protection for your intellectual property you know, if you need it quickly. Now what's the downside? So the downside is it doesn't cover any of the use. So you, you got none of the use of your pick as a pick, as a guitar pick, or as really any kind of pick for anything. You only got the ornamental aspects of it. So anybody wanting to get around that just has to change the shape of it and they're around your uh, design application. Yeah, no, it's gotta be unique. You know, there was a time where I didn't, you know, I thought design patents, who cares? But I've seen where it can work. Um, especially if you've got this certain design that's, that's being manufactured, that seems to work, that, that's, that's different than anything else that's out there, that's got that unique design. It seems like it's pretty smart. Um, I have a student now that's in the packaging industry and there's some prior art, prior patents, and he's done his differently. And there's really a particular look that people want. So I'm, I'm, I'm recommending for him to, to file a design patent because I think it's smart. I think so too. It's really, I think design patents really come into their own when you're in a crowded area. So packaging is super crowded. There's all kinds of packaging patents out there. And if he's changing something to sort of make a brand identification or a product identification, that's perfect subject matter for a design yeah. uh, patent application. Now, I wanna, I've got something else that has a design patent on it. And Damon, I can't believe it does. <laughs> all right. Okay, give it to us. Okay. I, I have this, these spin cups, they've been around for a while and, you know, they do this. But you know where the design patent on this? Because rotating labels, they've been around for a long time. I have 20 patents on rotating labels. But I learned that the shape of the cup, wow. the, these little lips, are critical. Yeah. <laughs> if, well. you, if you don't have these, it doesn't work. Right, and so your design patent covers that little lip. It does not cover the fact that it captures your label. So, I mean, it's really good, it's super easy. You don't have to worry about any of the prior art with respect to the use of it. But now you've got some protection for this thing that you may not have been able to get you know, otherwise. I'll tell you, Damon, we, we must have gone through 10 different iterations of how to find this lip on here that would actually hold, that would actually hold a sleeve on. That's awesome. And it doesn't seem like it's like, well, that should be really simple, but no, it's the combination of both. 
is what really made it work. So, well, so did you, did you and your, uh, you know, your patent attorney, did you guys explore the utility patent for that and just decide, hey, there's too much art here or we can't get that? Or how did that process go for you? Well, I, after a while, um, this, there's original patent on this that I filed that was going to come off a patent. And it's old. It's been around for a long time. So I was finding another way to have some ownership to it, right? And when I first filed it, I didn't know about these certain lips. I didn't get it, you know, right? Because I hadn't manufactured it yet. In fact, I didn't even care about this yeah. patent. But years later, right when it was ready to expire, someone wanted the darn thing. It's like, okay. So... And Excellent way to get, you know, extend out your IP. That's a perfect way to do that. That's now, awesome. Now, let me tell you where I made a mistake, though, Damon. Yeah. I uh, drew it up. My office drew it up. We sent it in and it got rejected. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because so, you got to draw them correctly, right? Yes. All right. Not, not a trivial task, surprisingly. Shockingly. No, and I'm going to say, hey, James... Um, please put up a drawing of the cup so you can see what an actual design patent on this particular cup because it has to be done a certain way. And I, I learned the hard way on that one. I thought I could get, a, get around it, but uh, I couldn't. So anyway, Damon, thank you very much. Everyone, I want you to think about a couple things here. When you're um, navigating uh, the intellectual property landscape, IP, what's been done before you, and if you're looking for something that will give you an edge, don't disregard a design patent. I used it a couple different ways. The two examples I gave you um, that will give you some form of, I should be protected. Okay, truly yes or no, who knows, because who wants to go to court? But it's gonna make somebody think twice, right? Exactly so. Okay, all right, everyone, thank you very much for listening. Stephen Key, Damon here. Thanks for watching.